So today I am doing a little gardening as I've discovered I have a green thumb. This is how the big guy assists. Yep, this is also known as a distraction. He will work on that and keep me company and not run out of the yard. Way to go, Doug. And this is what I am working on. Woo, so pretty. Wish me luck. Let's see if I actually do have that green thumb. I think I do. Doug has faith in me, can you tell? Hello everyone and welcome to episode 10, 10 of the Jen Sheelan podcast. I am Jen of jensheelan.com and today is Tuesday, June 28th of 2016. So I'd like to welcome anybody who is new, welcome all to the newbies and if you are a regular, welcome back. And I'd like to introduce you to my co-host, Doug the Dog. Come here, buddy. You know what to do. High five. Good boy. <laughs> so, all right. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Tumblr. And I have a Ravelry group for the podcast as well. Doug has his own thread in there, too. You're so spoiled. He's such a ham. <laughs> so if you'd like to join the group in there, I do also announce um, if I need test knitters, if a pattern is released, any giveaways, and chit chat about fun nitty things in there too. Okay, so every episode I talk about the podcast that I was listening to while I was getting ready to film. Today was The Grocery Girls, and I swear I'm hearing their name everywhere. Those two are so popular, and I can see why. They are so much fun to watch. <laughs> And I think it was the last episode that I watched where they had so many giveaways to give away all these prizes. And I'll tell you, I need to get my hands on one of Mrs. Brown's bags. I'm seeing them everywhere too. I'm having a little bag envy. Just a little bit. <laughs> so check out the Grocery Girls. They are a lot of fun to watch. Okay, let's get right into it with Spin and Right Round. Now I haven't really done a lot of spinning and I think it's been the last three weekends that I've told myself I'm going to spin this weekend. It's going to happen. No, it hasn't. We've, we've been getting ready for the party, so our 4th of July party. So it's understandable that I did not get any spinning time in. Can you lay down? Oh, all the way. All the way and you get your cookie. <laughs> Anywho, so I really haven't done a lot of spinning. Hey, so fresh. He just wants to be on camera. But what I've been doing is I've been working with the Malabrigo Noob, which I talked about in episode nine. And I hadn't spun Malabrigo in quite some time. And I remember it being what I called a little fussy, but so worth it to spin in the end because it is so, so soft. And then I remembered what I did to make it a little easier to spin. Right? Do you remember? No. Nope. He's going to sniff it too. What I did was, this is all variegated. There isn't any way I can really stripe it or do anything like that. I'm not really worried about what's gonna happen with the colors. So what I did was I took my braid and I pulled it apart and I've been splitting it. Whoop, like so. And then I'll split it again and split it again to get thinner strips and they're so much easier to spin off of because it's just easier to draft that way. I was trying to draft off the braid and it just didn't want to give. And it's, you know, it's merino, so usually merino is pretty soft and easy to spin. But this, I'm not sure what it is, but I think it just wants to be pulled apart. And then, ta-da! So much easier to spin. So, if you try spinning some Malabrigo Noob, totally worth it. Oh my god. <laughs> Pull it apart, it will make it a whole lot easier for you to spin. And again, well worth it. In the end, oh my goodness, I... Oh, the finished product once you knit it up is just so stinking soft. I can't even. Worth it. So hopefully I will get to spinning again soon. My week is a little bit busy getting ready for a 4th of July party still, doing all those last minute things. You know how, how you have to make all those last minute appointments. It's like, I gotta get my brows done, I gotta get my hair did, and all these things. Last minute. But I will make it happen. I will finally get a little bit of spinning time soon. Okay, on to selfish knitting. I'm so excited to talk about my selfish knitting. Oh, wait till you see what I have done. So great. 
Okay. My first project, as you can see back here in my clear chucks, <laughs> are my cozy knitter. I'm calling them my yarn chicken socks because last last episode I had worked on the full pair of socks with a full like seven inch leg and I had a decent amount of yarn left over. So I was like, huh, I bet I can get a pair of ankle socks out of that. So I'm getting a little dark here. So I'm going to try to, there we go. So I said, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to play a little yarn chicken and I'm going to knit a pair of ankle socks out of that. And I did now. Okay. So I kind of lost at yarn chicken, but I still won. So I may have lost the battle, but I won the war <laughs> because I had little bits of it left over from when I tried to line up the stripes for both pair of socks. So I kind of had to cobble the toe together, but I'm okay with that because the toe is going to be hidden in the shoe. You won't see it. And I had to do the same thing for the heel, but who cares? I have a pair of cozy knitter ankle socks that I will wear with my awesome chucks. There is a picture of them on Instagram as well. So great. And I think that picture has probably gotten the most likes out of any of my picture pictures posted on Instagram so far. Cause duh, how cool is that? So now I can wear my capris and my chucks and a pair of knit socks. What's up? I know it's genius. It gets better because now I can't stop. I am addicted to knitting ankle socks. Holy instant gratification, Batman. And I'm doing it all with the afterthought heel. So I'm just knit the tube. And I mean, the heel, I didn't really follow any particular pattern. So what I did was I knit an inch of two by two ribbing. And then I knit about half an inch of stockinette and then placed the stitches on hold for the heel. That's it. And then the rest of it I knit with the afterthought heel instructions done super super easy and super fast I mean I knit almost a whole sock well when I was resting on Sunday I pretty much almost finished the whole sock in a day they're fast really really fast instant gratification <laughs> and if you have these shoes and you put okay I'll stop going on too much about that one pair of socks let's move on to the next pair so Bohemia Fibers I love Amy from Bohemia Fibers because I think I've talked about this before you can send her a picture of your pets and she'll dye the yarn to match your pet. So of course I had to get Doug socks. Hello. <laughs> what I love about these socks is they show the light parts of him and the dark parts. And you know how he has that black beauty mark on the side of his face. She did little black spots on the yarn. Look at that. I can't. How cute is that? That they're on my socks. And of course, ankle socks. I need, really need to get my hands on a sock blocker. I keep seeing these fancy wood sock blockers and I, I must have one. I will keep searching. If you have any recommendations, please comment in my group because I need to make one happen. Anyway, so I knit these in, as ankle socks, not only because I'm addicted to knitting ankle socks, but I'd really like to get a pair for my friend Sheelan out of the same skinny yarn. And I think I can do it. I should have enough, but just in case what I think I'm gonna do is I will knit the heel, or not knit the heel, I'll knit the cuff, I will knit the foot up to the toe and put it on hold, do that for both socks, see how much yarn I have left over. If I run out, worst comes to worst, I can use a natural for the toes or a black for the toe and the heel. I can make it work. So I think I'm gonna do that so I don't lose the yarn chicken and then have one whole like half of a foot in a different color, because that will look a little silly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I think I'm going to do for my Frank Sheelan's pair. So we'll each have a pair of dog socks. So other selfish knitting. I have been busy getting ready for this 4th of July party. Now I've told all you guys, I'm like, I really need to knit more of my Americana jars so I can put them out in the yard. It gets better. So as you can see, I have three behind me. Ta-da! I've knit four total and wait till you see this. It's so good. So good. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera without knocking myself out. Look at that. I feel like little Bo Peep. <laughs> but you put these out in the yard. See? Ta-da! And put the candles in them. And put them out at night lining my yard. How stinking cool is that going to be? I, like, I can't wait to get the pictures of that. For reals. And then of course, 
The lid is a star. Right? Like, can you get more patriotic than that? I don't think so. So I can't wait. So now they're all knit. Finally done. I'm like a little Americana jarred out, and now I'm knitting <laughs> a pair of, you guessed it, ankle socks <laughs> to wear too. Because, duh, at our party, I have to wear my chucks. And my now patriotic ankle socks, cozy knitter. This Patriot colorway is getting well used. Because, oh my goodness, not only can you use it for socks, you can use it for my jars. Love them. I'm a little addicted to your yarn, Christina. I can't help it. I, the self-striping thing and your colorways, I want to knit all of them. All of them. Just saying. <laughs> so I'm almost done with the second sock too. I'll definitely have that in time for Saturday, so I'm not even worried. Again, because they're super fast. And these, you know what's fun about self-striping socks? Is, I mean, you kind of get like, can't wait to get to each stripe. So it just makes the sock seem that much faster. That's what I like about the self-striping thing too. And it's mindless. I don't have to think about a pattern, nothing. The self-striping is the pattern. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. <sighs> My favorite part, beverage of choice. <laughs> oh my goodness. And it is crazy humid and hot. Doug and I were a little warm. Was gonna wear, have a little bit of a different um, what I'm styling, but I had to kind of change that up because it's really warm. So I shall need this beverage. This is Entitled IPA and I'm representing Hingham because they are right out of my town. And this is a yummy IPA. I really, really like it a lot. It's got a nice bite, good flavor, nice kick. I dig it. And I love that it's from Hingham too. I'm a little sentimental that way. So cheers. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hot summer day and a beer. You can't beat that. It's just a cold beer and oh, it's just so good. Mm -hmm. All right. I may need to keep taking some sips from that to keep on going. Getting a little parched. Okay. So as I said, what I'm styling, I had planned a totally different outfit and I was a little worried about this dress that it would have a little bit of too much. Mm -hmm but I'm trying to hide that a little bit so I could be a little proper. <laughs> so I was gonna wear a different t-shirt, but I will park that for another episode. So instead, I chose my yarn ball earrings right here. And these are from my two sisters and my brother. So it's from Alex, Brittany, and Drew. And this was from Christmas a couple years ago, I think. Guys, I wear these all of the time. I love these earrings. They're super cute. I believe they sell these on Knit Picks as well, so check that out. But I think if you Google yarn ball earrings, I'll see if I can put a link in my show notes too, which will be on my webpage. Just saying. If you're looking for anything for anything from this episode, they'll be all be in my show notes. I will put a link to where you can find these super cute earrings. Hmm. I should get a little knitting necklace to go with that too. I have my laugh one on for my Colleen. My friend Colleen Sheelan. I don't know if I can see it. Boom. It says laugh on it. Very me, right? <laughs> I love the little set. It's very cute. See, I'm all sentimental. I can't help it. <laughs> now, on to showing off. Now, finally, I've talked about these for the past, like, there was two episodes. I don't remember the, which ones. But I've mentioned sock blanks. I have been dying to knit from sock blanks. And thank you, Instagram, because I found witch candy. Oh, yes. Witch candy. I'll show you her card first and then I'll get to the good part. Witch candy! I don't know if her little logo is going to show up. Give it a second. There it is. How cute is that? I love the writing on it too. Like check that out. Look at it. Come on now. There we go. There we go. How cute is that? I now have a sock blank and this is I think she calls it a double knit one. So basically you knit two socks at the same time which I don't usually do. I'm usually I know how, but I just prefer to knit one sock at a time, but I'm like, you know what? I'd like them to match, which is also weird for me. Usually I don't care, except for the self-striping ones, but anyway. Dandelions! How pretty is this? Oh, these socks are going to be awesome. I cannot wait to make them. Oh my goodness. So yeah, so if you knit the two at a time, they'll both match. So I was like, yeah, I kind of think I want to do that. 
So when I ordered, I went for it. I'm like, I think I'm okay with it. I'll knit a simple pair, probably an afterthought heel because I'm addicted to afterthought heels. I love just putting that on waist yarn, going back, pop them in later. So easy. Love it. So I'll probably wind up doing that. I don't know if I'm going to do any kind of pattern. I may just let this yarn do what it wants with a simple stockinette sock too. I haven't quite decided on that yet. If you have any recommendations and you have knit from a sock blank before, please comment in my group because I'm curious. Do you go on the simple side or do you use a pattern? <laughs> Look at how pretty that is. I can't wait. <laughs> I have so many socks that I want to knit now. I'm like, which one do I make next? I don't know what to do. <laughs> so that's my sock blank. Random thoughts. Mm -hmm. A virtual knit night. What do you guys think of having a virtual knit night? I am tossing around the idea of having one, hosting one. And I think you do it through Google. I think it's Google Hangout. And I've tinkered with it a little bit. And I have a few volunteers. Robbie, thank you. Photo Nick L. She has volunteered to be a guinea pig for me. So I will figure out a time to do that. Um, I will probably do that after the 4th and after our knitting retreat next week. <gasps> Laura, Florin, it's PA, and Robbie, I get to meet you next week. <laughs> Sidetrack, so sorry. Anyway, back to virtual knit night. I would really like to give that a try. So if you are interested, also comment in the group and let me know so I can give it a try. I think that would be kind of cool. I mean, especially, you know, for me it's kind of hard for me to get out, especially at night during a weekday, you know, I'm, I'm wiped. I'm pretty, I'm pretty exhausted and it's just much better for me to be in a comfortable atmosphere and my comfy chair and whatnot. So trying to do a virtual knit night still gives us a chance to hang out, especially if we're spread out all throughout the country or the world for that matter. Trying to get some people for, from overseas, it might be a little difficult, but if we tried it like a Saturday morning for us, for the, you know, for the U.S., we might be able to make it work for them. So let's kick that idea around and see what you think. Giveaways! Oh, you guys, I have so many prizes lined up, I can't even. I am so excited. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the lineup. They're not all going to be for June. They're going to be, I mean, our jar along is running from June through December. So these prizes are going to be spread throughout those months. So keep an eye out. So this is a kind of a intro to what's coming. So I put feelers out on Instagram. I was like... You know, if anybody's interested in sponsoring, you know, a prize for my giveaway, please let me know. You know, just kind of put the feelers out there if anybody's interested. If not, totally fine. And definitely, I got a few responses, which was great. And I can't wait to show you. I'm sorry, I'm stalling because I'm like building up to the moment. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the jar along again first. So I'll give you a brief. I, I know I've talked about this for the past few episodes, and you can find details in my show notes or in my Ravelry group. I am running a jar along with my friend Candy, Pause for Stitches. She has a group as well and is running the same jar along in her group. So what you do is you knit any Jen Sheelan jar pattern and you post a picture of it in the jar along finished object thread, thread and just kind of give us an idea of what you would do with it or how you would gift it. And more than one entry is okay for a month and you can enter in my group, Pause for Stitches group, or both two chances to win, and if you knit more than one jar in a month, you have more chances to win. I say go for it. Yes, I do. <gasps> How fun is that? What else did I want to comment on there? Um, knit more than one. Oh, I know what I wanted to talk about. So we're featuring a different jar each month. You don't have to knit this pattern this month. We just wanted to feature one, each, one for each month. The featured jar this month is Fairy Spirelight. And I have to talk about Shelly. She is SJH Country Girl on Ravelry. She was really clever with her fairy's firelight jar. She put these micro LED lights in the jar. They're like these little fairy lights. I can't tell you how pretty it is. It's like she captured fireflies in the jar. Totally check out her in the finished object thread for the jar along. She posted a picture of it. Go check it out and see how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. Stunning. So, of course, I had to order myself a set because I'm dying to have, I have to own it. I'm like, I have to have that. It's so pretty. <laughs> So Shelly, yeah, you enabled me. I had to go and buy a set for myself too. So I did. Thank you, Amazon. I made it happen. And then, okay, so for June for this month, I will show you again the prize that I'm offering, or prizes that I'm offering. I am offering you a little pint-sized jar, along with the fun hanging lid that I've showed off to. Love these with the hook. 
put them outside. During our fire pit Friday, I had my fairy's firelight and a pixie petal jar, and they were so pretty lit up at night. I kicking myself for not getting pictures of it, but I was too distracted and having a good time at, with the little kiddos that came to visit and playing with Doug. So I will get pictures next time, or definitely of my Americana jars on the par at the party. Must get pictures. I'm stalling again. My goodness, I get distracted by these hanging lids. I can't even. First prize. And also part of the prize pack. So one prize per person, well, one prize set per person will be given away in my group and in Candy's group. So we have one winner per group. I'm giving away a skein of String Theory Caper Sock, and the colorway in this one is Isis. Oh. And you get a Jen Sheelan pattern of your choice. That is the prize set that I'm giving away for June. Now for oh, my sponsors. Oh, this is so cool. I'm so excited to show this off. This is really what this episode is all about. I was really just building up, building up to it. First, now I'm going to stall even further because I need a sip so mean <laughs> okay leave it to you see so first up I have Roberta from Steel City Stitchers she's the Steel City Stitcher this is from Roberta here's her card and she responded and I met her actually through candy and I will show you what I saw and what made me well you know start following her in a second what she donated was one of her bags, her project bags. Isn't this so pretty? Look at this project bag. I love it. It just speaks summer to me. I love it. The little sunflowers and the little birdies. And look at that. The little birdie. Look at that. Progress keeper on the zipper. So stinking cute. Love the handle on it too, so I can walk around and knit with it. Little carabiner on the side as well. Ta-da. And she is so sweet. She includes all this stuff when you purchase her bag. It's so sweet. Look at this little project bag. This little project bag. This little guy, Notions bag. Huh. Little matching Notions bag, guys. Look at that. Look at that. Little keychain thing. And she gives away cute little pins and stitch markers. And the one has a little pickle. Look at that. And she gives away little stitch markers to go with it and a progress keeper. Awesome, right? So you can win that prize from Roberta from Steel City, Steel City Stitcher. I cannot say that three times fast. But what was so sweet, I can't, I've been dying to rave about this. She sent me a present as well. And it was one I kind of raved about and I couldn't shut up about it. And now I really can't shut up about it. She sent me a beer bag. Oh my God. She sent me a beer bag, you guys. This is what I saw. So Candy had purchased this for her husband, Jamie, who is actually, I should sidetrack for a second, he um, is doing very well. I had given him a shout out in a previous episode. He had had a heart attack and wound up having a triple bypass and a valve repair. This poor guy and poor Candy, but they're both doing very, very well. So I should give a little shout out to them. But Candy had purchased this for Jamie because she taught him how to knit. He was using a tissue box as his project bag. And she's like, in new. So bought him this from Roberta. And Roberta sent it to me as a present. It's mine. I, again, I cannot shut up about this bag. I love this bag so much. I've been showing everybody. <laughs> so Roberta, thank you again. I absolutely love it. And oh my goodness, look at the progress keeper on it. It's a bottle cap. Come on now. Do, do, do. Give it a second. Get a little dark. There we go. I don't know if you can see it there. It's a little shiny. It's a bottle cap. Progress Keeper holding on the zipper there. Mm-hmm. It gets better. Of course, I have my matching little Notions bag. <laughs> she sent me this cute little handy notes book. Look at that, with the little stickers. He spoiled me rotten. He spoiled me. I love it. <laughs> and she sent me some cute stitch markers as well, which I've already put in my little Notions bag. I think I'm going to put all my favorite little stitch markers in the, and uh, progress keepers in this little bag because it's perfect for it. I got a pickle too. <laughs> and I got a little Heinz bottle. Look at that. Isn't that so cute? And I got a little paw print. Uh-huh. I know. And I got a little beer one <laughs> to match my bag. 
<laughs> I can't even. I can't even. And these cute little stitch markers. It's a little star guy. And another little progress keeper. Where's the end of it? There it is. How cute is all that? I mean, come on. She spoiled me rotten. You were so sweet, Roberta. I cannot thank you enough. Again, I have not shut up about this bag. I show everybody I bump into. It's practically become my purse. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. And you guys, I can't wait to give away her sunflower bag as a prize. You will love it. And it's awesome. <laughs> so check out her site as well. I will put a link to it in my show notes so you can check out her other bags. Another really cute one that she has is these cute yoga frogs. You gotta look at the yoga frogs. They're adorable. And I may have enabled Laura, Laura Nitz PA, to go purchase one. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Phew! I have more. Yes, I do. I have more prizes coming. Kind of feeling very Grocery Girl-esque from their last episode as now it's my turn to show off all the prizes that I have. Or what do they call it? A party in your mailbox? Now every time, like, I know I have a package coming, I think of them and I think, I'm gonna have a party in my mailbox. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so another prize that I have was from Lorelai Erdo. And let me put, pick these up here so I have them all done. So she is Lorelai Erdo Jewelry, and she is of the Knits and Beads podcast on YouTube. Check her out. She's adorable, and she makes beautiful jewelry. So check out her shop on Etsy as well. And she, I had like, I, would, I when she reached out, I was like, you know, she's like, well, I can make what you want. You know, what, do you, what would you like? And I'm like, do you make stitch marker earrings? And she goes, why, yes. Yes, I do. So yes, yes, she did. So let me pull them out. I'm so sorry, Lorelai, I felt really bad because I actually broke the seal on the little boxes, but I was, I really wanted to show these off on the podcast. <laughs> these are the ones she is giving away. Look at those. Aren't those so fun? How fun are those? I can't even, I can't even. I love these, they're so great. And Lorelai, you sent me a pair too as a present. Everybody's spoiling me, right? And I may like it a lot. <laughs> you sent me a pair too. Aren't these so pretty? I can't wait to wear these. I actually should have worn these for this episode, but I wanted to debut them when I talked about giveaways. So perhaps in the next episode I will wear them. Very cute. From Lorelai. Check out her shop on Etsy. A beautiful, beautiful jewelry. Love it. And thank you, Lorelai, for donating these for the giveaway. And for sending me a present. Again, everybody's spoiling me. <laughs> I do really appreciate it, though. I think it's so, so sweet. And I can't stop talking about all these things. I think it's so nice. Um, and just the knitting community in general. I mean, everybody's so giving and so sweet. And I just really appreciate all of you. Just saying warm fuzzies. More prizes. Okay. Next up, I have the Knitty by Nature shop. Melissa, your stuff. All right. She sent me a ton of these. Oh my goodness. So I don't know how I'm going to gift all these away. We shall see. I know the ones that I'm going to have to gift for July because, duh, these will totally make sense once you see them. Look at these little 4th of July stitch markers and the little progress keeper in there. Yep. Just saying. Just saying, they totally make sense, right? Yep. Got one, I'll show up a little better. There we go. Yeah, they're super cute. Little red, white, and blue going on there. Makes sense for July, right? So I'm pretty sure that's going to be in the July prize pack for you guys. She also sent along, and I'll just keep these in the bag. Hopefully they'll show up. Here we go, little dragonfly. Oh. Oh, look at this one. I love this one. It's a little fox. Look at how cute that is. Oh my goodness. And I love how it's a little progress keeper and the little stitch markers that like work with it. So like the fox has the little orange stitch markers to go with it. Oh my goodness, and little progress keeper here. A little sheepy and a little genie bottle. So cute. So cute. So Melissa, thank you so much for these. And you also spoiled me rotten, you guys. <laughs> I seriously can't thank you enough. She sent me presents. <laughs> and I love how you get me. So I kept them all on here. I've been dying to put them in my notions bag, but I held off. So she too sent me a little beer stitch marker. Huh? And little yellow ones to go with it for beer. Right. I'm getting a little dark here. Here we go. Look at that. And see the little leaves and then the little dog bone in there too. How cute is that? The little dog bone to represent my doggie. My beer. My beer. Love it. 
Thank you so much, Melissa. I love these so much. Cannot wait to use them on a project. Super excited. <laughs> but it's gonna be a toss up. Like, do I use the Harry Potter ones right now? Do I use the beer ones right now? I'm gonna have to like just dump them out or like just pick some out of the bag and, and go from there. Because how do I choose? I have so many cute stitch markers now. I don't know what to do. Just, you know, it's gonna be random. Put them in my little notions bag and just boop, boop, boop. I think that's the way it's gonna roll. Unless I'm feeling all beer and I just use all the beer ones. We shall see. Okay, and last but not least, <laughs> these are awesome. This is from Barbara of Knitting I Love. Go check out her podcast on YouTube. She is so much fun to watch. I love her. <laughs> she cracks me up. Barbara, you gave me such an awesome shout out again in your last episode. And yes, I totally squealed every time you said my name. And you gave an awesome review on the test knit of my Starlight Blooms, as well as my Fairy's Firelight Jar. Thank you so much for that. I totally appreciate it. And I swear, it, it, I couldn't have gotten a better review. <laughs> and presents. So I kind of had to purchase from her shop because I couldn't resist. I got my little needle holder. And because I'm knitting Magic Loop, these are fun. Like if you have a big shawl on the project, you tuck your needles in there and click, and it holds your needles in place. So I'm knitting the socks, these are my Patriot socks, on Magic Loop. So what I did was I just tucked my end of my needles in there, or my cord in there, and it held. So now when I go to put it in my project bag, my ball of yarn doesn't get all entangled in my needles. Love this love this and she sent me i bought well I, I bought a coaster look at this coaster check this out oh my goodness and it's a needle sizer look at that and her little mini i love projects little, little uh, stitch markers there and project keepers love love and how sweet is she she sent me a spare because what's going to happen you're going to use your coaster and you're afraid you're going to ruin it so you're not going to use it I want to use it. So I have spare. I have one that can be pretty and one I can use. And when in doubt, flip it over when I go to use it as a coaster and then flip it back. I think the one is going to go in my little knitting ditty bag right there. Thank you, Barbara. I love my Prezi. <laughs> and she sent a prize as well for our jar along. She sent a cute coaster. Totally use it. This thing is so fun. Look at that with her little knitting I love stamp. And her little progress keeper slash stitch markers. Look at that. So right there, they're project keepers and these little project keeper holders here, which I actually want to sew one of these onto a finished object because that's what I, when I first looked at them, that's what I thought they were. I think I'm going to do that. And so right now they're project keepers. You flip them. I forget how I did this. Oh yeah, you hold the end. Whoop. And now it's a stitch marker. Look at that. How clever are you? And okay, I have to admit it, I kind of loved when you called yourself a cheeky monkey in your last episode. <laughs> I was dying laughing when you said that. <laughs> Thank you for the laugh. I thought that was hysterical. You called yourself a cheeky monkey. You kind of are, but I love it. <laughs> so those are the prizes that I have lined up going forward through December. Each month I will also include a pattern of your choice my gentile and pattern of your choice and another little goodie to go with it too so we will see how i dole these out but keep an eye out going forward for which ones if you have your eye on a particular one um keep an eye out for each month for which prizes are going to be offered and you can have a chance to win Ta -da! phew now i'm going to briefly run through all the get the uh, giveaways the knit alongs that are running right now where i am offering up a pattern um, as a prize so i figured i'd be a little sponsor Okay, so we have, um, let's see, I did the jar along. We have the 12 Months to Christmas Knit Along hosted by Jen of the Down Cellar Studio Podcast. She's also running the Splash Pad Party. And I mention these because you can double dip, I believe, if you knit a jar, but the jar along. And a lot of these you could be able to double dip. Most of them allow it. Um, the Graduate Your Stash Knit Along, and that is hosted by Mary of Kino Knits. And I believe that ends this week. I think it ends Thursday. So you have little bit of time left. Use some up some of that old yarn you have for a little bitty jar. Enter for the jar. Enter for her knit along. Just saying. We have the Pal Cow and that is hosted by Michelle of Actually Knitting. And we have the Summer Superlatives Knit Along and that is hosted by Becky of Knit Actually. 
And I believe, let's see who my winning, oh, Yarnder Woman. She is running a knit along as well, where I'm giving away a pattern of your choice, I believe, for her knit along. So check that one out as well. That's all the giveaways and knit alongs that are going on. And every uh, episode, I've been putting a summary of each of these knit alongs too. So if you want to go check them out in my show notes, it'll give you a brief, you know, description of what each knit along is. So if you're interested, you can go to their groups and check it out. Try to make it a little easy for you there. Last but not least, what's up with my patterns? I am so happy to announce that I have released my Starlight Blooms pattern. It is live, it is out there, it is on my website and in my Ravelry store, available for purchase. I will have uh, more pattern photos to come. My poor Frank Sheelan has been very tied up, so I will get other photos to go, but the ones I took actually really gave a good show of the stitches and the pattern, so I went with it. I'm like, you know what, this picture actually isn't half bad, and it really displays what the shawl looks like, so go for it. So that is released, that is out there. It is a $6 pattern, like I said, on my website and in my Ravelry store. So check that out. And it is now available, so for the jar along, as one of the patterns you can choose if you win. Another one that is coming, it is very close, is my Victorian Yuletide ornament, part two. So that set is now in test mode. And my testers, I really wanna thank you too. So I'm gonna look at my list here so make, I make sure I get everybody. I have Jessie840, who is Jessica. I have Mommy Knits, who is Uli. I have SJH Country Girl, Shelly, who did the awesome little fairy lights in her jar. And Linda Lena, who is Linda. And all of these girls are knitting up their test knitters for my pattern, and I can't thank you ladies enough um, for testing this out for me. There's three different ornaments in there, and they're a relatively quick knit, but the one in particular, Catherine, fussy lady that she is, is a particularly long, um, it's 24 row lace pattern and they're all, each row is different. So it can be a little tricky, but it is totally worth it in the end once you knit it. And I will show you what I did with them in a second. Um, what I did not mention, and thank you Barbara from Knitting I Love, she asked me the question, what size ornament balls am I using? I am using plastic 83 millimeter ornament balls. I usually purchase them from Michael's um, craft store Right now they're not available on their website, so I've been looking on Amazon and I did find them on there. Hobby Lobby Online is offering them as well, and then if you Google it, there are a few other sites you can find them on, but Amazon was my go-to because I have Amazon Prime. And I believe it was like $12.99 or something like that. It worked out to be like $1.50 a piece, so maybe, I don't remember exactly how that worked out, or I may be thinking of a dozen and it's a different price. but. It wasn't too bad. It was actually a relatively decent price. And if you have Prime, you get free shipping too. So that is an option, but make sure it's an 83 millimeter ornament ball. You can use glass. I haven't been. I prefer to use plastic just because I have a large dog <laughs> whose tail can knock into the tree and ksh, we have glass everywhere. And then it's ruined because you can't reuse the cover. So I tend to use plastic, but you can use both. So that is the size you will need. And here are the ones that I've been knitting. <gasps> I knit them with sparkles. Yes, I did. So I took the natural yarn, which is my go-to, just because of that soft Victorian. It just, mm, I love it. With silver sparkles in it. Yep, there we go. They're not really gonna, oh, they're showing up a little. Right there, yep, that's Genevieve. Isn't she lovely? And then I have Catherine, the lace repeat lace work that I was telling you about. A fussy little lady that she is. Come on now, Let's see if she'll show up there. My lights, they're so bright. There is a better pictures of them. So if you want to get a good um, close up of what they look like, go to my project page for the Victorian Yuletide Ornaments Part 2, and I will link to that in my show notes as well. And here we have Eleanor named after my grandma Rebel. Ta da! There she is. I love these ornament hooks too. I bought some more of them that are a little bit different. They have, they're a little bit shorter, they have the same curly cue at the bottom but they're close at the top, almost like you'd put another ornament hook in them. Still worth it, because I got a big pack of them. I think it was like a pack of 48 for like nothing on Amazon, so I think it was kind of worth it. These I bought from Michael's, but I mean, you only got, I think it's like a dozen or something like that. So getting the pack of 48 and getting the same look was kind of worth it on Amazon. I'm kind of an Amazon girl lately. Colleen, I blame you. I thank you <laughs> for talking me into Amazon Prime, because now I can't stop. I'm like, oh. I can just go on Amazon for that. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, I have it in two days. This is amazing and free shipping. Best day ever. Yeah, it's your fault. 
but I love it. Thank you. <laughs> so keep an eye out for my ornaments. Like I said, they are in test mode, so they are coming soon. I really, you know, the next week is going to be kind of busy. I could try to sneak in some photos and release the pattern. We will see. Um, next week, same deal because I'm going on my knitting retreat on Thursday. So if I can, I will try to sneak in photos and aim to have that pattern released by next week before I go away. If not, I will aim to have them out by mid-July. Keep an eye out for those. If you have any questions, you can contact me through Ravelry or through my email. It's j-e-n-n -N at jenshielen.com. Don't forget the two N's. And it's S-H-E-E-L-E-N. Everybody always says A-N. It's E-N, just so you get the spelling right. So when you try to contact me, you get me. Phew. That is it for me today. I am all done. I have shown all these prizes. Now I can come down for my happy hi. <laughs> I am so happy to have shown all those. I couldn't wait, especially that beer bag. I was like, oh my god, I can't. I gotta show it, like, right now. So there you go. And, okay. So I was going to do a separate video for this, um, but I will do it right now. I think I'm in that place where I can do it, hopefully without crying. Um, last week we had to say goodbye to our very old rat terrier named Parker. He was 17 years old. Oh shoot, now I am getting upset. Um, he was a very, very old dog, and it was his time, and he was my poor Frank Sheelan's best friend, and Frank wrote this beautiful tribute to him, and I actually started a thread in my group so that you could see it. I had to share it. It was too sweet not to share. So we had that happen last week. We said goodbye to him, and if you want to go see, like I said, his tribute, please go check out the group, and I'll say goodbye to Parker. He was a, <laughs> that little dog... <laughs> His mission in life was to positively drive me crazy, <laughs> but I did love the little guy, and we'll miss him. And Doug has been doing very well throughout it. He's been a little out of sorts and not quite sure what to do without his alpha, um, but we've been spoiling him rotten to kind of make up for that and hopefully get him to a new normal. But Douglas, do you want to say goodbye? Do you want to up? You got to up so you get a cookie? Yeah, come here. Right there. There we go. All right, one more high five for the road, buddy. High five. High five. Go boy. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week, and I will see you after I get back from my knitting retreat, and I can't wait to rave about it. Thank you, guys.